All right, pre-cal 11, here we go. Uh, section 3.3, we are adding and subtracting rational expressions, which essentially means we are adding and subtracting fractions with unknowns in them. So obviously, whenever we add or subtract fractions, we need to have a common denominator. That's gonna be the main theme in this whole section, is finding it, how do we find it, what's the simplest way to find it? So let's just look right at it, example one. Here I have two expressions, right? Now, I don't really care if the denominator is the same. It's straightforward, because if the denominator is the same, I'm just adding or subtracting. So right away, I see that I have x plus 2x all over the same denominator, which simplifies to 3x over 6, which simplifies to x over 2. Done. Now, again, we're just simplifying. We're not trying to do anything with these things right now. We're just performing operations on these expressions. All right. Now, second question, again, you have a common denominator, so subtract the numerators. x minus 1 over x squared minus 1, but you always want to check to make sure you can or cannot go any further. What is the bottom? Difference of squares. So if we expand the denominator, we see now that for your brain, right, brackets, we can cancel. And we're left with 1 over x plus 1. So we're working with fractions. When we have a common denominator, easy peasy. When we don't have a common denominator, that's when we got to do a bit of work. So look at uh, this next section here. If we go back to just operations with fractions, probably grade 7, 8, 9. Finding a common denominator the easy way, or the, the most straightforward way, is just multiplying the two denominators by each other but that is sometimes more work than we need to do. And let's not do more work than we have to. If we look at these two denominators here, they have a common factor that isn't 48. 48 would just be multiplying six times eight, right? But they have a common factor of 24. And x squared and x cubed, if you multiply those together, you'd get x to the five, but we don't need to do that. x cubed will be a common denominator. So that means we only need to do, we need to do a different operation on each thing. So if we have 7 over 6x squared, we need to make an equivalent fraction to give us a denominator of 24x cubed. So we're multiplying by 4x and 4x, because that will give us 28x over 24x cubed. And then the same for 3 over 8x cubed. We already have the x cubed, so we're only multiplying by 3 over 3, which gives you 9 over 24x cubed. So, just scroll up a little bit. What we are looking at is 28x minus 9 all over 24x cubed. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Now, what I want to do here with example 4, so I'm not going to do the whole example going to highlight what's happening. So scroll over a bit here so I have a bit more space. Now, if we look at our denominators, x squared minus 1 is x plus 1, x minus 1. And x squared plus x is x times x plus 1. So they have something in common, right? They have this in common. So that means the x squared minus 1, we have to multiply by what we're missing. So we're missing that. And for the x squared plus x, we're missing that. So you'll see that represented here. I have my first term, and it's missing an x, so I multiply by x and x. And then your second term is missing the x minus 1, so then multiply by x minus 1 over x minus 1. And then what you have is you have 1 times x is x, so that where that, that's where that comes from, and then minus 2 times x minus 1. So water bomb the negative 2 in, and you end up here. Denominator stays, right? Simplify the top, and you're done. So have a look through that in the notes without all these circles on it if you want, or watch this again. But that's how you approach a question where you're only missing a chunk, right? Identify, I'm only missing this, I'm only missing this, rather than multiplying by everything. Moving on. So... Part of this is the ability to identify patterns and the ability to identify 
um, a simplification before just going procedural, right? Like procedural knowledge is all well and good, but can you identify some critical thinking? And for me, if I look at 3x over 3x plus 6, I already see that I have a common factor on the bottom here of a 3. I could actually factor a 3 out of the bottom and I have that. And since you have only multiplication on top, those 3s can cancel. So your first term here, this 3x plus over 3x plus 6, is actually just x over x plus 2. And then that's plus 1 over x plus 2. So boom, there's your common denominator. Add your numerators up. And brackets, sure, you are done. So if you identify those at the beginning, saves you a lot of work. Now, you could get a common denominator of 3x plus 6. You'll end up in the exact same place. You'll just have to cancel the uh, factor out at the end. So similar thread to that is this one here. You have x minus 2, and then you have 2 minus x. 2 minus x is similar, right? <clears throat> but you'll see here, if you factor out a negative, you get x minus 2. And if you factor a negative out, here's what we're looking at. 7 over x minus 2 plus, now remember a fraction, a negative in the denominator or a negative in the numerator just makes the entire fraction negative. So you're looking at plus negative... 4 over 2 minus x, which is just 7 minus 4 over, oh, sorry, time out. Did this work for a reason? There, negative 4 over x minus 2. So 7 minus 4 over x minus 2, and now we can simplify. So again, you're looking to identify those things. Example 7, you see I left this one written in, and I'm just going to highlight some key points. So to start, factor the denominators. So these factor here and here. So you'll see you have x plus 2, x plus 5, x minus 2, x plus 5. What that tells us is that x plus 5 is common to both. What's missing, right? What's in this one? What's in here that's not here? x minus 2. And what's in here? That's not over here, x plus 2. So you're only multiplying by what's missing. And then you'll see you take the 3x plus 9, and you're going to multiply those together, and you take the 14 times the x plus 2. Uh, foil happens here. Water bomb happens here. This is a simplification. But then the last step is try to factor that again right? Because you've changed it. And we did that here, and you get 3x plus 2 and x plus 5, and then you'll see that the x plus 5s cancel. So that example there basically gets everything involved. Finding a common denominator, what factors are missing from it, foiling, uh, distributing or water bombing, then simplifying, refactoring, and then canceling. Everything we're looking for. So that's it. Um, what I'll do is I'll scroll forward here and I'll do one of the last questions for you guys. Mm. Maybe question 31. <clears throat> so I'll scroll up to give myself more room because we need to factor. Now, when you have an A term, Use the AC method, you can use factor by grouping, you can use the box method, or you can use an intuitive approach. So I'm just going to demonstrate an intuitive approach. The first two uh, values here, the one that goes here and the one that goes here, have to multiply to 2. The only thing that does that is a 2 and a 1. The last two numbers have to multiply to negative 1. So you're going to have a 1 here and you're going to have a 1 here. So what matters is which one is negative. Since this is positive, it means you had positive 2. And if you put the positive here and the negative here, you're going to foil and get negative 2. So that's not right. So then the intuitive piece is that's got to be negative. That's got to be positive. Feel free to use the AC method or the box method or factor by grouping or however you want to factor it. Just don't screw it up. But the intuitive piece 
when the A term only has one set of factors. So for the second one here, I know it's going to be a 3 and a 1. And I need a 1 at the back. But I need a plus 2. So again, the 3 needs to be positive. So plus, minus. So right there, I factored the first one. 2 minus 1 and x plus 1. We have factored the second one. 3x minus 1, x plus 1. And now we just ask, you know, what's missing from here? What's missing from here? Well, on the right we're missing this, and on the left we're missing this. So multiply it up. So now you have 3x minus 1 times x plus 3 times 2x minus 1 all over your big denominator. 2x minus 1... 3x minus 1, and x plus 1. All that's left is to simplify the top. So we're going to simplify and see if we can cancel. Water bomb, water bomb, water bomb, water bomb. 3x squared minus x plus 6x minus 3 simplifies to 3x squared plus 5x minus 3. All over... 2x minus 1, 3x minus 1, x plus 1. So all we got to check is, I'm going to make this 2 look a little bit nicer. All we got to check is, can I factor the top and see if I get one of the bottom factors? Well, if I use the AC method, this becomes x squared plus 5x minus 9. I can't factor this without using the quadratic equation. And quadratic equation is not going to give me anything nice like what I have down on the denominator. So I'm done. And I know I'm done for that reason. Boom. All right. So uh, try the workbook. Try the questions. They're similar in scope, uh, but some become more challenging. You don't have to do them all. I just want you to try and get this concept under your belt. The most important concept here is getting that common denominator in the most simple way. So only multiplying by what is missing not trying to multiply denominators by each other. It's just a much more, that's a much more challenging approach because your numbers get bigger and you have to factor out at the end. Only multiply by what's missing, all right? So good luck with 3.3, three, and I will see you in the next lesson. Take care, guys.